Hello once again how are you doing this is Rajiv and welcome back to Avriti and today i'm going to show you a problem in fact it's not a problem people think it's a problem but it is a gift if i import an image in photoshop after resizing it if i am happy with the placement and i want to delete something so if i make a selection and let's say that i want to get rid of this sky path here now if I hit delete key on the keyboard, logically it should get rid of a content, but rather what Photoshop shows us is a warning dialog box which says could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. What is this smart object? We never imported any smart object when it turned into smart object. So those are the questions we keep on wondering about and eventually we settle down by saying OK and then right clicking on this and then converting it into a rasterized layer and then hitting delete key and getting our job done. So it doesn't seem like a problem. It is just some additional steps we have taken to get rid of the content which earlier Photoshop was doing on its own. I'll tell you what happened when you have imported the image and what is smart object and we will through this tutorial check whether the smart object is really something doing smart or it is just the name of it. So I'm going to import this image once again and then place it and then say enter. If you look at the layers panel and hover your cursor on top of the layer thumbnail, this is the layer thumbnail, this entire thing is layers panel, this is the entire layer. So if I tell you to go to the layers thumbnail, I mean this area here. If you hover your cursor on top of it and let it be there for some time, it shows you the tooltip which says smart object thumbnail. What that simply means is that this particular layer is a smart object. I'm going to introduce you with the smart object concept and how to work with it in a later video. But right now the focus is on understanding whether we should use smart object or not. So we are going to see the advantages of using smart object. Now this is something which Photoshop introduced from CS 4th version of the program. And since then it is really a lifesaver. And they have also introduced a lot many features along with the smart object. But all of them are only possible if you work with a smart object. Now before we start, uh, I want you to see why it got imported automatically as a smart object. Actually there is an option in the preferences dialog box. You can open it by hitting control key on the keyboard and look on the right side. Now look at this resize image during place and it says always create smart object when placing. So the first one is even if the image is larger than the size of the page, it is going to resize itself and fit it inside the page somehow because this option is selected. The next option says always create smart object when placing. So that is why it is getting resized automatically and getting placed as a smart object. I'm going to say OK. And without rasterizing, can we clip the content? Yes, certainly we can do it, but I'm going to show you how it's done in the masking video. So do check out the masking video. Let's get back to this. We are going to make a copy of it, but before I do so, I'll just transform it. Keep it on the left hand side. Okay. And say enter and I'm going to make a copy of it. Now there are two ways how I can copy it. I can say alt and then click and then drag to make a copy and then place it here this is one way or also make a habit of doing layer via copy the shortcut is control j notice the layers panel the image got created on top of it and we can drag it like so perfect so we are going to quickly create two text layers also or one text layer is fine why i'm creating two text layer and then i'm going to type here smart object Alright, so I have typed the smart object and placed it on the left hand side. Now this will tell us that this is the smart object. I'm going to make a copy of this one also by holding alt and then clicking and dragging it towards the right. Okay, I'm going to double click here on the smart object copy, which is this one, the text, double click and change it to rasterized object. Fine, I'm going to lock these two layers. So shift click to select both of them and lock it so that accidentally we don't mess it up. And I'm also going to pull it down to the stacking order so it is safe and preserved there. They have given it rasterized object tag. See this image here on the right hand side. I'm going to first convert it into a rasterized image. So right click and choose rasterized image. Okay, now we are going to do a quick experiment by resizing the image couple of times. 
so for the first time we are going to reduce the size to a very small and then we are going to enlarge it back to its own normal size so right now if you zoom in and then check out both the images are identical in fact they are the copy of one another and we have just rasterized the next one the last one okay so first thing first i'm going to say Control t here to bring out the transformation and then reduce the size of it and make it really tiny and then say enter to accept the transformation perfect let's just zoom in you can hold alt on the keyboard and scroll your mouse wheel up and down to zoom in now if you zoom in you would be able to see this and we have literally destroyed this image when we are transforming Photoshop is resampling the image and as it does resample the image it also loses and leaves out all the data okay so it threw away a lot of information and all we have left is few hundreds of pixels here if I resize the smart object at the same level and that can be done by selecting it and using a shortcut control shift T see so it scaled exactly the same and if you look at them there is no difference so far smart object is not doing anything smart the reduction in the quality is there in both the cases it lost a lot of information fine so I'm gonna just drag this smart object back to its position and let's try enlarging the image I'm not saying control Z I'm not undoing the steps I'm doing I'm simply again free transforming the right image by saying control T on the keyboard given that that layer is selected you'll have the transformation controls I'm holding shift and alt together so that the transformation happens from the center shift and alt together and then clicking on the right top corner and dragging it back to the size when I say enter look at what we have here so in the preview before I hit enter it was showing that the pixels are getting enlarged but that is not the case because Photoshop has a tendency of resampling the image if you do the transformation and this is what happened. Photoshop tried its best but it had very less information to begin with indeed because it threw the information away when we resize the image. Okay so let's try doing it with the smart object and keep our fingers crossed. So I'm gonna say control T and then bring it back to its normal size and then place it towards right and say enter now look at the difference this is what you get when you work with smart object it never threw away the information when you made it tiny it just kept it inside it so the smart object acts like a cabinet it's like a closet where you can you know keep your stuff and all of it is going to be safe no matter how small you transform the closet or how big you transform it it is not letting Photoshop resample the image it is only going to resample when you exceed the boundary of the original image that means if you want Photoshop to introduce more pixels then it is going to resample while enlarging the image but if you are reducing the size of it it will throw away the information see it seems as if it is throwing away the information but all the information remains intact inside the smart object so that's the difference number one and I think this is you know one of the best or one of the most powerful features of smart objects so I'm gonna get rid of this last size object first and then we are back to one single smart object on the left hand side I'm again going to make a copy of it and I'm going to show you another feature of smart object but before we do the comparison let's convert the right hand side image into a rasterized one again okay the quality is same everything looks same it is the same replica now I'm going to go to the filter menu and apply a filter on it so i'll choose a filter from the filter gallery okay this is the last filter which i have used so that's why it got applied see the very first option is filter gallery alt plus control plus f okay now after applying this filter let's say that i want to tweak it up Let's say that I'm not happy with the values of the particular filter applied and I want to tweak up the settings of it. Or let's say that I have saved the file. I think this is perfect for the assignment given and I'll take it to the client and then, you know, seek their approval. That is what happens in the end of the design process. So I'm going to save it and then close the file and then reopen the file there in front of them in Photoshop. And what if the client doesn't like the idea of this particular filter or he wants me to tweak it up? the only option I have left in that scenario is to bring again this file back into my project and then redo it all over again the other way of dealing with this particular problem would be to select 
the smart object and apply the filter i'm gonna apply the same filter this time it opens in the filter gallery and the same values are there i'm just gonna say okay to have the same effect on the smart object as well they both look identical there is no difference now the beauty of the smart object when you apply a filter on it it automatically converts it into a smart filter i'm gonna just you know move this smart filter mask for now we are not gonna use it okay so the beauty of it is you can double click on the filter gallery and change it to any filter you want or tweak up the i'm just gonna say control zero to bring it in the center and you can change it to any filter you want and then say okay and it will do the job even if you save the file and reopen it this feature is going to remain dynamic in nature so that's the benefit of working with smart filters number two and i'll show you another benefit of smart object which is really awesome you know you can apply a filter mask which i have just deleted what we can do here we can right click on this smart filter and then choose add filter mask to bring back the mask which we have deleted earlier so this is how you can add filter mask so the concept of masking is very simple i would explain it in a different video in detail but right now just understand this small concept and it would also be an introduction to the masking so basically this mask serves as a window in between the original image and the filter applied on top so if i switch off the filter you would see the original image if i switch it on you would see the filter effect but the original image is still there it's just that the filter is layered on top of the original image and in between we have this smart filter mask window so if i paint black in this window then it's going to hide the filter effect and reveal the image beneath it let's try doing it so i'm going to switch to the brush tool and make sure that the filter mask is selected it is going to get highlighted and then i have the brush loaded in my cursor i'm going to reduce the size of the brush and then right click to choose the hardness okay it is set to zero i am having a soft brush and in the foreground color i have black select now let's try painting over it so if i paint you would see that the mask effect you know mask is i'll just zoom in and then show you painted see rest of the image is getting that filter but wherever i have painted with black you can also see in this little preview in fact you can hold alt and then click on it to reveal what you have just done and it is just showing us the mask fine you can alt click back on it to hide the mask you can temporarily disable the mask also by shift clicking on it see this cross sign here so it's disabling the mask and we see the image with the filter we can shift click back on it to activate the mask and i'm again gonna repaint it with white to bring back the filter effect so it's very simple and very convenient wherever you want the effect you just make sure that it is white and where you do not want the effect let's say that i want to you know bring this bridge out of uh, the filter effect i don't want the filter effect to be applied on it so that's why i have black painted the let's repaint it with white and you can clearly see that effect is visible now i'm again gonna switch back to the black that can also be done by keyboard and it's very convenient just hit the x button on the keyboard to switch back to black and then paint over it see as i'm painting with black with a soft press the bridge is turning real so that's the wonderful application of smart object and these are just the few benefits of smart object i'll talk about more in upcoming videos so keep following the channel and if you like the video please hit subscribe like and share it once a while in your social media platforms have a good day thank you so much